you know what? I got something really special for everyone today, and it's really going to give us another way to go into this because this is 10 years for me. So every time I come in on a session to share this high level of metaphysical knowledge, I look to do that in a way that encompasses everything that is was important that I mentioned before or that I learned before. It's also very imperative for all of us to realize here today that we actually play conduits of each other's energy and the connections that we share with each other are indeed real. Even if you feel like, oh, I don't know this person because everything is connected, you actually do. And when someone is aware of that or a group of beings are aware of that, they use that in order to, to communicate in order to get any kind of um, resolution across or any kind of form of communication across that is that is um, that is needed. So if if I'm even coming into this space today, that means that I'm going to come in here and look to communicate with you in a way that is going to be different than other things that you may have experienced before. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm constantly in search of solutions. And what I notice is, is that even when they again exhibit with artificial intelligence, how it basically hacks systems or how it comes up with solutions for things that people think are impossible is it keeps trying and it starts using things that may have not been thought of. So in that, I feel like that when we're having these kind of conversations about consciousness, it then becomes a a journey inside of a person's mind and how well they can articulate their experience. And while this has got us so far, it may have got us to the point of even where we're at right now with how much we understand about consciousness, it still can't be seen as a superior form of communication just because it's verbal and it's also a variable. It, it's based on the conduit, the person who's the orchestrator, the person who's speaking, the condition that they're in, and their actual experiences. And if we keep operating like this before even initiating a space with a blueprint or a template that everyone can visualize or come into uh, uh, awareness of, of seeing as an image, right? So visualizing or seeing as, as an image and then allowing that image or that principle to become the template that we're all using to determine where we're at, what we're talking about and what's going on. So very simply, what I'm saying is, is that the power in templates, which I'm going to show you one today, and it's going to explain exactly how we're actually in a simulation and what is a simulated dream. And then what it is, even when real people would connect and and what that would actually be like. And I'm saying it that way because I, too, am also on my journey, just like you, to experience more and more of who I truly am as everything. Right. So you can see the more resistance I have to the adaptation of all the stuff that's really out here, the longer it's going to take for me to realize who I truly am. Because the if you notice in reality, here's certain certain things that people don't really take account of because they have feelings. And as I mentioned before, feelings are often different than fact. When you watch nature create things, if you look at a leaf, you'll find that the leaf is not actually perfectly symmetric. In fact, a lot of things that you see here that that especially are based uh, based on more denser matter like wood, stone, you actually see that when nature creates it, it, it won't actually be balanced. Go outside if you want to refute this, grab a leaf and you know what symmetry is because you can draw symmetry. Symmetry is basically mirroring something. And if you look at it, you won't find that symmetry exactly present there. So this means then that if you If you just realize that fact alone, you would understand how Earth itself and the codes that's being used here are not designed for when it gets into the the most divided objects for those objects to be balanced. It's only when you pull off this thing completely and I don't know, come out of your body, come out of your soul, come out of every single ID and then look. Will you actually really see this perfect geometry? And sometimes people that get on certain substances, they can see this. It depends on where they're at. If they're up on a mountain or if they if they've blown open a certain part of their third eye, they they see this unified field. They see this geometry, but there's seldom any real conversation about. So what is that geometry and what is it telling us? So the first rule here is to just understand that in the physical reality, quote unquote, that we're living in right now, when it creates something organically, it does not create it as you see it. Perfect. 
It creates it in a non-centered, imperfect way. So if you take a piece of paper right now, and I'll give everybody a moment to go and get a piece of paper and go and get a pen, I'm going to, I'm going to draw, I'm going to have you draw a template. And then I'm going to explain to you what that template is on a metaphysical level. And then from here on, you will have a map of existence. So you understand that even if you go into a meditation and you meditate on this and you basically bring yourself out of, of these worlds and these IDs, then you'll make it into an actual state where your consciousness will be clear and there won't be any confusions about what's going on in the experience the, or what we're calling the dream, because you will actually be awake. And when you're awake, there's an energetic signature to being awake. There's an actual feeling. The body will either start rocking back and forth because the field like a like a gyroscope has now increased in frequency. And if, if and the only way you're going to be able to see things perfectly the way they are is if you actually increase in frequency, because as I just mentioned to you, the denser things look like they're off center and off balance. So the first thing is, is realizing we're going to now do this from the perceived inside out. OK, but I'm going to show you how this is really outside in. But the way we're going to do it, it's going to seem like we're going from the inside out out which is going to prove also that people are basically flipped inside out because they went external so far it flipped their fields inside out so everything they perceive is all external so the first symbol that you're going to draw in the center is just an equilateral cross not a jesus cross with the balance unbalanced side on it with the big with the big bottom and the small top we're talking about just the equilateral cross which is a universal symbol for what it's called the four elements, fire, earth, wind, water. Now watch how this knowledge begins to unfold. So it's saying that from the inside out that the, that the, construct, the construct itself and the things that are made from that are made from these elements, fire, earth, wind, and water. And when we investigate that, we find even in physics, chemistry, et cetera, that that happens to be true. That combinations of fire, earth, wind, and water create all the material matter that is around us. Okay, now we're going to draw the next shape. All you're going to do is connect all the lines with a straight line. So that way it looks like a square. This is the metaphorical square that is always discussed in occultism. This square, it reveals quite a few things as we begin to unfold this. Remember, we're going from the inside out. The square means it's something that has been built by man's hands. Now, I'm going to have to go over this exact thing on Sunday, by the way, in sovereignty mentorship. So for those that are going to participate in that, just get ready to hear this again. But I felt that it would just totally be improper to begin anything that we're spending our time and our energy on without bringing the best that we've discovered to this point to be able to be a solution for others. So I feel that, again, going in the mind and hearing conversation is not enough. You need a visual guide of what's going on in the experience because it serves as like a legend for you to be able to anchor yourself back into what exactly is going on when you're experiencing something. So we have the square around this and esoterically, the square means everything that has been built by man's hands. Now, this becomes tricky because at this stage, we feel like man, things built by man's hands are like, the stadium, <laughs> the buildings downtown New York, et cetera, et cetera. And we see this quote unquote man's hands built world and we think we're talking about that. But that's a misconception because the temples that are out in Sri Lanka were built by man's hands. The pyramids that are out in, in, in Kemet were built by man's hands. But these structures themselves are actually a symbol of something. What is it a symbol of? What is a temple an assemble, a symbol of? The body. And the riddle is saying when something is built by man's hands, it has man's hand. <laughs> this is how what I was saying by it's one click off. Some people are so busy looking at the temples, they're not realizing the temple is a symbol of the body. And when it when we mean it was built by man's hands means that the body was built by man's hands. So we start to investigate this. And what we find out is that the dinonucleic structure of the configuration of the human being is in fact a hack. It is something that has been put together by some advanced life forms, i.e. grandparents, ancestors, elders, 
and it has been built in a certain way. Just like a person would build a temple, they could build it to their liking. So the body is actually the square. Now, if you want to actually confirm this to yourself, because all the systems are redundant in these kind of fractal based systems. So look at if you're in the house right now where you're where in your house, generally for 90 percent of the people, you're looking at a bunch of squares. OK, so when you step outside of the house and you step into what would be nature generally. Now you draw your third symbol. Your third symbol is actually around that square is a circle. So go ahead and draw a circle around that square. Now this circle that we're drawing right now is actually the circle of the organic dream, if you may. This means that how this is constructed, because you hear this knowledge and, you know, you hear from the beginning of time about Gaia's dream. And the story goes on that there's a much more larger being that is like our mother and it's actually sleep and it's dreaming of us. And because that's that was brought over into the Greek text, a lot of people don't take that serious because it was taken serious the Greeks. You would need the lexicon to decode how they took the, the gods of Kemet or the energies of Kemet and actually brought them over into their own vernacular and, de and encoded them again so that the fools would not understand the mysteries. So the story of Gaia is almost like a Disney story at this point for most people or just a, a, a faint storybook. But the story goes that a larger, more massive being almost in itself just a womb was able to conceive a dream from a higher level of awareness and a higher level of knowledge and it uses what we call organic things phi the golden mean the golden door the golden ratio etc the fibonacci sequence it uses that to create everything inside of its dream so the awareness that you're reaching right now is is that Hmm. That means then that that square that's inside of the circle is actually man or the things that were built by man's hands are actually inside of that circle. And if you can realize what that circle is, that circle is very similar to your mother's womb. No matter how much you punch inside of all of this, you cannot affect that circle. The womb is so thick no matter what the baby is doing inside of it, it can't affect the womb. The womb is stronger than that because it's not a strength who's stronger. It's a, a matter of codes. So let's go back to this square really quickly here because it reveals a lot. It reveals to you that somebody, mainly those who built those pyramids, those who built those temples in Sri Lanka, those who abide in by the cubit, which are the, that, that built the city of the sun, etc. Somebody is already understood the not only the geometry but also the energy the tone the vibration the sound in any art of how to create a dream within a dream by using the components of fire earth wind water even if it's in a simulated form and creating a world around the other beings that are inside of it so i want to explain this very clearly Every adept and master knows, even if you go to ancient Africa, that the trials are really for you to master fire, earth, wind, water. And when people start seeing that externally, they imagine themselves battling fire. They imagine themselves battling water or drowning, being pulled out of a burning house or trying to make it through a burning house, being buried by in a grave and escaping the grave, being caught up in a whirlwind and escaping. You see what I mean? So that, that's the external mind trying to comprehend the great mysteries. When really what the knowledge was that was encoded within these geometries and these systems, there was only a secret for people who were ignorant, was that, hey, if you could tap into the fire, the earth, the wind, the water inside of you, because we made you in a design that has that inside of it, you could then pull the strings of that force externally and make it externally manifest to you. So very simply put, if you can figure out how to fully get in tune with water inside of you, you can make rain outside of you. You can change how clouds look. You can make streams stop depending upon how much you're in tune with the element in you. 
So this, of course, defeats all ex this all this fake magic that's out right now, because it's all about doing something externally. It's not even about how to figure it out, how to do it internally. And that's why most of it doesn't work. The only way that it works is for another person to believe it works. This is the blind leading the blind. They both walk, fall into a pit. Voodoo does not work unless you have two people who believe in voodoo. Nothing exists unless you have two people that believe in it. The same rules apply. So what we have to determine is what we believe in and what we know. And the difference between those two, because those are going to give you the key fundamentals of how to actually manipulate the matrix. Now, what is the matrix? In this case, I always like to put a, 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 another term in front of that artificial or uh, yeah, artificial matrix. OK, that's the square. Artificial in this tense means that it was an artifice. What is an artifice? It's something that you build, a structure. It's like something that you're casting, a mold. So these beings, let's say, which are your ancestors that built on the square, meaning they built on things like language, vibrations, tones, frequencies, chemicals, lights. They are using the components within the dream to manifest and change things in the dream. So let's keep forward. Now, as I told you, Gaia is in a dream. So there's another shape that goes outside of this circle, and it may be a little more difficult for you to draw. But just imagine a football, the American football, and also imagine how an eye looks. And this design is called a visica. OK, this design actually goes outside of the circle. OK, so you have the visica, you have the circle, you have the square and then you have the cross. OK, now this visica, as you know, this specific shape is very amphibian and reptilian. We look at the eyes to determine the planet. That's why they say the planet is the gateway to the soul. So you look at the eyes and when we get one of these concave eyes, as we call it, we know that this represents really the first strand of DNA, the first spiral. And when we look at reptilians, we find that reptilians actually have one strand of DNA, while humans have two strands of DNA. So that one strand DNA, this is what is meant also when you look at this shape that you have now drawn, when they say that you're the apple of my eye. What this means is that if you find yourself in the center of that square, in the center of that, that, that cross, you would be the apple of the eye of quote unquote God a far more superior collective force that all of this exists inside of as we're making our journey to what looks like outside, but is actually inside. So we, we would have to know that in math, which is the, our English word ma'at, or ma'at is our Kemetan word for math. I think I said that opposite, but they're the same language when you understand what you're looking at as a symbol. My at or math is the revelation that all of this that we're talking about right now has all been quantified. There are actually numbers inside of frequencies. There are amounts of times that water drops. There are the exact size of the moon to the size of Earth. There are actually racials. This is called God's language. This is why when you walk into any kind of sanctum or secret society, a real one, there's a language that you don't understand. They're talking in a language and writing in a language that you don't understand. High levels of math is very similar to that. If you walk in one of those mathematical rooms and they got the board out, they're writing a bunch of stuff that would be like a secret society language to you because you wouldn't understand it. So too, the secrets of the knowledge of the stars, the language, the lights, the gases, the things that can't be seen. This should put you into the proper correction as you're looking at your design. What is seen? Do you think that you're seeing when you're way inside of the man-made construct called the body? Let me prove that you're not. So we call this seeing because we're looking around us and we're actually perceiving these things that are around us. But actually the fact is most of the things that are still in their perfected shapes like atoms, which are really there, quirks, air, <laughs> hydrogen, you can't even see. So if 
we're calling this seeing, but we can't see the things that are most important. Wouldn't that technically be blind? So we find in the royal science written five to six thousand years ago, it says, in fact, yes, that what the brain is actually doing is it's using something more akin to a tentacle called manas, a tentacle to kind of feel over the reality that you think you're experiencing and then bring back to you what it's seen. So this whole experience that we have at times when we're using the blind mind to perceive what's going on around us is just simply feeling all over stuff. I feel good. OK, they, they feeling good to me. It's hot outside today. I think the sun is out. The birds are chirping. All right. It feels like this person loves me. I, I, I feel like that. I'm hungry. I need to eat. And, and, I, and, and all of this stimulus coming into the consciousness always happening so much. When do you think it'll be ever time for the person to really see? And what, it is, what is it that you think that they're really seeing? Now, we've already revealed that if you actually look at microscopically into the actual eye, the real physical eye, you'll see that there's actually an entire web of hexagonal shapes sitting on the front, sitting on the bottom part of the person's eye that they're looking through. This is facts. This is biology. And it turns out that in real mystical knowledge, they tell you that when you're looking through that, you're looking into the dualistic world. You're looking into the divided world. You're looking into something that is an illusion in a sense that it is made out of light, but also an illusion in a sense that it's not the real one. It's actually a replica. And unfortunately, because the way light diffuses in the size of your eye, even physically, you wouldn't be able to see the whole thing. This is why you would need to turn around all the time to see more of the reality. It's a metaphor. It's saying that while you're here, you'll never see the whole picture. You must come out of the square and at least get to the circle, which is basically the, dr the real dream that uses organic forms that all the wizards, the warlocks, the mages, and all of them are all the dead people. All of them are all in that part of the dream. Hopefully till you make it to the visica, the all this self, the awareness of the geometry, the fractal based nature of the whole thing, the mathematical code, the sequ sequences and all that. And then there's two more shapes. You can call it one more shape that you draw around this, which is two large circles. Two large circles. And what these circles are, when you see them, when you see them, uh, let's say, in a 3D format, is they're, they're the torus. So those two large circles that are around this uh, Visica Pisces that we've now drawn, these are in themselves the torus field. So this whole thing is... Tauruses with Visica Pisces spiraling inside with the orb of a dream spinning, creating a thick field or a, a thick layer of the difference between the real world versus the man-made world, which is the square that is inside. And then the man-made world, which is also known as the crown of the Magi, being put together because that, if you look at it now, it looks like a pyramid. So this evokes five. Four evokes five when you put an L around it. It's the throne of Osiris. So it's four going to five. So this design in the center is talking about the knowledge and the wisdom of how to create a world. And I'm just here to also explain to everyone that that's already been figured out. So if you're in something like that, which I'm calling the simulated dream, because now Bing's figured this out and started using much more proficient ways to get large amounts of people into their collective dream, like the TV, like the educational system, like languages. See, the art itself, it stretches across anything. It just must be perfect. Whatever art you go into, you have to have the perfect code of the template implemented within that art, and then it'll work. And what our planet used to be is a place where we explored that infinitely. We were never trapped into one dream. We could always choose to go into another projection that was created by our consciousness. And that has that has not changed. What has changed is there are hackers in the system that will actually use your projector, your energy, your force, your actual life force to project their dream. So all our, teach all our teachings are about is how to get that energy back for yourself, how to stop being this external being, using these tentacles like an octopus to try to feel your way around a reality that is not even the real one.
how to come into yourself in this time, because only thing that you're going to get, as we talked about earlier, is this point to point system that every time you walk into a room, every time you go into a chat box, every time you watch a video and you know that integrally this is not even on point. You're going to scroll down to the comments and there's going to be a bunch of conf confirmations that it supposedly is. And this is direct evidence. Once you start seeing stuff like this, and that's why I said this is a conversation with real people right now. We're, we're not saying there's any fake people in the room. Real people. Once you start seeing this, it's the direct note to you in in the illusions that you can plunge yourself into. It's time to wake up. You have somehow lost control of the complete spectrum of how the dream operates. And now you must pull out of the dream, readjust things, and then whatever you decide to do from there, that's what you do. But to stay in the dream, you will be allowing someone or something else to be able to utilize your life force. So let's see how it works. In a point to point system, as we've learned after we've just distilled all of these ancient teachings, we find out that it's as simple as when you get upset or when you get angry, you lose life force. When you fall into any confliction, when you're sad about something because someone doesn't want to do any of those kind of energies, jealousy, any of those kind of energies, when you use them, when you turn them on, you lose life force. And that actually what the dream is, is the dream is a, a network that is tied into your feeling based structure in order to tug those strings to allow you to play characters in the dream. So in this in this case, we would then say that in Gaia's dream overall, the animals and the people, which are a different type of hack, mainly the animals are moving on their instinct and their emotions in order to determine to them what the reality is. And because we were designed with some of the parts from that dream, we also have that way of going back into our animalistic side of ourselves and just acting crazy and wild and not really tuning into what this intelligence is revealing to us. And I always say that's really the two. That's how it's all going to boil down in a minute. You're just going to see two type of people in the world. You're going to see the wild ones, which have completely surrendered to their own natural passions. I'm not saying either one of these are good or bad. Once you start going into that again, you're back inside of the matrix. You're back inside of the false womb. It's just highlighting those two worlds, the wild world. And then you have those that have gained this intelligence or intellect. Or this light. And what it has done is it has revealed a truth. Now, just because the truth is revealed to you has nothing to do if, with if you can accept the truth. This is a hard one. It happens over and over again. We search for years for the truth. Then we finally get it. And especially the way we positioned ourselves in life, it seems to be that either we would have to lose our lives or accept the truth. They seem to be paradoxes to each other. Welcome to the paradox. Now, the solution to the paradox is you also have two bodies. <laughs> So you're actually capable of allowing your body to go into supreme mastery in each stage. And this is why the masters taught that. Yeah, because of the animalistic fire, earth, wind and water still being able to be trained, which would make a real magus. Then so, too, you can actually bring these forces of emotions or the oceans together within yourself and actually gain control of that. And then when you know how to master that, instead of being angry and upset, you could enlist the feeling of happiness, joy, or just a smile because those give life force. So it's basically like a hack to unhack the hack. <laughs> the hack was that you would even feel anger, pain, disdainment, all of that stuff, things that you don't prefer in your own dream. The unhack to that is that you now, when seeing this, because now you're starting to realize how this all works and this knowledge that you're receiving, but it needs to be confirmed consistently. And the only way to confirm it is every time you see someone doing something like what I'm explaining now, like, yo, if they're in the division world, you can count on them not seeing the whole picture. So that's going to throw them off balance. Then you're just going to deal with the polarity all the time of the person until they can be corrected. And that's it. So if you're still getting into something crazy with them, you're just being pulled into that whole vortex. And then now you're, you're being a part of the character inside of their dream and whatever's making them dream. It's that simple. So you just got to choose which one is your preference. 
So, of course, what you'll find is, is that <laughs> that is not that easy. Somehow through this training of where we've been growing up at and how things have been presented to us about solving problems, et cetera, we feel like the only way to actually solve something is through conflict and to do it externally. Someone the other day told me, yeah, I'm kind of upset there's new people coming in the country because when it gets really hot, they still are taking these long showers and it's using up all the water and then all the water is gone because they don't understand that you can't run a lot of water. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a classic example. You will be trying to change a bunch of people that you don't know from coming into a country that you do not control from using and taking a shower too long. You're going to be miserable forever trying to regulate that unless you figure out how to tap into water outside of you and just uh, inside of you and make it rain outside of you. That would be the only solution. Do a rain dance. So it's basically that people will feel like they're melting down because they won't be able to come up with external solutions anymore for how to fix this reality. Because there was never any. It's only the internal solution that you have to train your animal bodies, if you may, that are giving you the feelings that you're having right now, the lower chakras that you are you're alive and that you exist, <laughs> the lower chakra energy. And you have to take them and actually train them. And this is metaphorically to training your dragon or training your totem animal. You're on this wild animal. This is what I was saying about the, 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 um, the two bodies you have. You're on this wild animal in the two worlds that you live in. The animal wants to be wild. So you have this wild animal and then you also have this very precisely intelligent trainer. And these are the two beings that you oscillate in between to actually allow you to move across the space because you're neither one of them. At minimum, you're everything. But being identified to the wild one that you are that you're riding around in or to be identified with the super intelligent being that you have now conceived in this projection to be able to gain control of it. To lean on either one of those as if they're absolute is to block out your own light, meaning that the only thing that will technically keep you going through infinity is to actually realize within how you can't be destroyed. It's like the ultimate paradox. It's not something that can be figured out. It escapes knowledge and wisdom. It weasels its way out of everything. Where did we all come from? Where did it all start? No one can answer that. If they start trying to ask, smack them, be like, look, man, you're defiling the holies of holies. That's all we really got out there is infiniteness. And so if you try to bring infinite into the finite, you're going to ruin it for yourself. There is something out there. You can be encouraged by it all the time that it exists. The sheer proof that we are in existence means that we'll never stop existing. It's self-confirming. And when you tap into that, because right now, if it's somebody's got to show you an immense amount of love, you got to eat this chicken sandwich that you want. You need to get this new car. You need to get a better job. If it's any of those things, it, it, it can't sustain who you are. And those things, of course, they're they're direct plug. It's like a gas station. They're a direct plug into the lower root chakra. It fills up with the most energy. But this is why they're saying that. So what you become is basically like and if you have this issue, like a Dodge Viper versus a Prius. You need so much for you to confirm who you are. You need so much life force to confirm at every single moment who you are. This is why when people die, they get faint. They become thinner light. They start to diffuse because their spirit, the, the true thing that they're made out of, hasn't been fed. It only eats light. You, could you imagine you invite this king over or queen, these royal beings that are, are in this high level of consciousness? I'm talking about you. And then you throw some shit on the table <laughs> and you're like, here's our food. Here's some food for you. Can they eat that? Well, that's an obvious answer. So this is what it's like to imagine that your higher chakras, if you may, and we're just giving terms here, your higher systems or faculties would be able to power up on <laughs> a bag of Doritos or, or something that doesn't even have the energetic potential to be able to power that kind of vehicle. So this is where common sense also comes in, like using all of these arts that we learn, electronics and all these different things that we've learned. You can't power a light body on oil that is not even combustion, that doesn't even combust. So this is now coming out as, hey, you can't have that kind of diet 
and get to this level of awareness. However, because you know you can make these optimizations to your vehicle, because remember, you, your vehicle is your wild car. That's your wild thing you got going on. You can choose the fuels. You can change out where the, the, the motor. You can change the way the energy is coming in. You can make any edits that you truly want because of the gift that has been given to you. So in conclusion, since this was to me just an opener of just looking at the design, you need to be aware yourself of these things inside of your own being now. Two years ago, one month ago, totally different time and space. We would be surprised how fast we're moving right now. But where are we going? You're going in through vibrations. <laughs> Some people, they don't know where they're going. Like, where, where are we going? Well, if you're oscillating and you get up to a certain frequency, it's not really a distance, but you'll harmonize with higher octaves, which are an intelligent field. And in this field, it, it, it's literally like it's watching over this field. It masters over this field. It's a code. And thus you would be perceptive of that code and you would see little stuff in your life. Like you would walk out and notice this car driving by and the number that immediately flashes on that car and the label that's on that car. And it would tell you everything about the rest of the day. You would have a have a query of wisdom that you would want to receive and someone would just start saying it <laughs> and still be off context to what they're talking about or on context to what they're talking about, but also on context to the question that you just asked in your mind. This is what it really is. When they show those strings of this puppet master, because they show you all of this stuff and they want you to be afraid of it so they can just keep canceling out the maxims. That hand, as I told you, the built by man's hands, that hand is you. The strings or the five strings, which is the pentagram strings, are you being able to control your physical body and the animal or the crown of the magi in order to be able to do the things that you want to do inside of the simulation. So that's why the title of this, this conversation today was Thriving Inside of the Simulated Dream. Not healing inside of the simulated dream, feeling sorry inside of the simulated dream, blaming somebody inside of the simulated dream. That's not the build today. So I trust that, and it was recorded, and I'll make sure it comes back around. This guide, this symbol in itself of a template to how to get out of reality as you're calling it, and get into actuality is actually really not inside out, but outside in. And so that's the opus that I wanted to begin this with today.